Thanks for tuning in. So I have a very special story to share with you today. It's the four month anniversary of me getting stung by a stingray. <laughs> stingray, yep, you heard that right. Or when you know we're like buddy buddies now we have a lot in common except <laughs> I'm alive uh, thank god so that being said I want to tell you the story because I think it's pretty funny at least now um, four months later it's finally funny and just to tell you some facts about stingrays because they're actually very interesting animals I was reading a lot when I was you know uh, lying on the hospital bed and some tips maybe on what to do so you don't get stung by a stingray because I really don't want you to get stung and some um, tips on what you should do if you do get stung. Let's get started. I want to set the scene for you guys. So this is about the 20th of April. I am in Thailand on this island I'd never been before called Koh Mak with my Thai friend. So I want to tell you a little bit about this island. It's trying to be a low carbon island to lower its ecological footprint. There aren't any cars. People just have their motorcycles and then there are the Thai taxis too. It's a very islandy island. I mean, I, I would say it's the perfect place to go if you want to feel like you are on an island that doesn't feel overly developed. So it's a beautiful day. We're going to snorkel, my friend and I, and we get our masks on, ready to go. She goes swimming this way, I go swimming that way. And beautiful coral, everything's great. At one point I stand up to fix my mask and I'm standing on the sand um, next to kind of the coral reef. I start walking a little bit and then I feel something on my ankle, on my right foot, on my ankle. And instinctively I jerk my foot up and I kind of swipe, swipe at my foot, swipe at my ankle like, you know, just like that. And I thought it was a crab or something. I call out to Jane, my friend, and I'm realizing, wait, this crab, uh, it's a very painful crab. Like, I don't know what kind of species of crab Thailand has, but uh, this doesn't feel that good. I start walking towards her, kind of limping because it's, it's hurting a lot. We start walking to the shore. And as we're walking, I see something, get ready for this, guys. I see something lodged on in my right butt cheek. Okay, as if my bleeding ankle wasn't enough. Now I see this object that looks like a thin, sharp, very straight seashell. And my first instinct is to get it out of there. So I start pulling and it's not coming out, it's there. Jane, she starts trying to pull it, it's not coming out. Then she starts yelling to shore, somebody help, somebody help. And we're freaking out, I'm freaking out because she's freaking out. She's freaking out because, well, we don't know what's going on. So people come out of nowhere. I thought we were alone on that beach. I don't know where these individuals are coming from. I mean, we were screaming pretty loudly. So people just come, we get to shore. Somebody helps me, they lay me down on a blanket, try to clean the wound, try to figure out what is on my butt cheek. And people are looking up on their phones, Googling like, oh, I think it's this, oh, I think it's this. Someone said, I think it's a sea cucumber. I don't know, did they just invent that? I thought that was just the character in Spongebob. I was thinking back to the time when I watched that show, like the 10 most deadly animals in the world. And I was going through the list like, I think it's number one, like maybe it's a stonefish, maybe it's number two, maybe it's a blue ringed octopus. I was literally, you would have thought I was some kind of, I don't know, <laughs> expert in venomous wildlife. My friend, she gets, she finds a restaurant and the woman calls a taxi to come get us. So um, we're on the beach waiting for the taxi. I'm crying. I don't know what it is. Where's the hospital? Is there a hospital? Remember, this is an island with barely any convenience stores. I thought for sure there was no hospital. For sure there was nothing. I was just thinking they have to take me back to the mainland. I have to go get treated over there. What if I don't make it in time? It was all about like the unknown in time. We don't know what this is. And we don't know if I have sufficient time to get it treated. Because at this point I could tell it there was venom in my body. It was kind of going up from my ankle, up to my knee, past my knee, all the way up my leg. And I was feeling my leg like pulsating <laughs> with pain. Eventually the taxi comes and it brings us to, miraculously there was a hospital. It was like a clinic, basically a room 
with uh, one bed that looked like it hadn't been used in a while. It actually looked like you would just, the kind of room you would see in one of those World War II movies. I started freaking out because I was like, this place for sure does not have the anti-venom. They uh, examined the thing lodged uh, on my butt cheek and they translate to my friend in Thai what it is and they're speaking in Thai back and forth and I'm like, what's going on? Am I gonna die? I don't know. Um, and she translates for me on the phone what the doctor said it was. So what I read on her screen said batoid and I'm like, what the f is a batoid? So I look at the picture. A batoid is just uh, the scientific term for ray. So great, this was checked off. The doctors knew what it was. They put anesthesia on my butt cheek and I did not feel a thing. The barbs are actually in a in a way, they have little kind of ridges on them that are backwards. So they hook into your skin, into the tissues, and it's very hard or impossible to pull it out. And it's a good thing I didn't understand what they were saying because my friend said, they were talking about how the barb was uh, very deep, but um, they got it out. Hopefully there's uh, nothing left in there. But in the end, they just gave me antibiotics and that's so the cut doesn't get infected and just painkillers for the venom. Stingray's venom is actually primarily composed of serotonin, which is called, uh, you know, the happy molecule, the mood changing molecule, but um, <laughs> I uh, can't say that happy <laughs> was the emotion coursing through my body. Yeah, that's why it's so painful because of serotonin. And the pain of it probably peaked after I left the hospital, maybe about two hours after the sting, and it lasted maybe a total of five, six hours being very painful. After that, it was dying down. 24 hours later, it was like, it was like I felt nothing at all. So actually what happened was the stingray, it, under its tail, there is the mechanism, the sting. So the sting is what cuts you so the venom can get inserted. And it has also little barbs, and the barb, which was in my butt cheek, it can get detached from the body, like in a me and Steve Irwin's case, or in most cases, it doesn't get detached, it just cuts you and the venom is released. I was lucky enough to have uh, the best of both worlds. I got the full two for one stingray experience. I'm uh, very glad, because you know, I mean, you only get stung by a stingray once. <laughs> and just something super funny in following days I was telling you guys this is a very small island so word got around that I was the girl who got stung by a stingray this taxi driver comes up to me one day and he's like so have you seen any stingrays around here and I'm like <laughs> okay buddy we don't have to be this indirect like apparently my friend she was talking to this man he was saying that yeah that people on the island know <laughs> great it's like a village in the 1600s and uh, the people were really shocked because apparently they said I'm the only person I don't know if they meant only tourists but they said only person who's gotten stung by a stingray <laughs> I was like the talk of the town. I felt like a local celebrity. I could have like been signing autographs. So that's basically my story. <laughs> now I want to give you guys some facts. So stingrays are actually closely related to sharks. Little did I know. And Greek dentists in ancient times actually used the stingray venom as an anesthetic. I can bet that that hurt way more than the procedure they were probably using it for. And I want to tell you guys some facts about what to do so you don't get stung by a stingray. When you're walking in the water, especially near the coral reef like I was in the sand, you kind of want to shuffle your feet like this so you don't do a direct step on the stingray. I mean it was just trying to defend itself. That's what it's going to do. Like any animal, it will defend itself. A stingray is dangerous only if the um, barb is released and it punctures some kind of vital organ like it did for Steve Irwin. Also, if the venom is closer to your heart, yeah, this is obviously more dangerous, more life-threatening. Last but not least, I have a surprise for you guys. With me, I have my most precious souvenir in the world. It is, I feel like a makeup guru. It's the barb from the stingray. It's about an inch in length. So I hope you guys like this video. I hope you got some amusement out of it and maybe also some information. Yeah, just try to not freak out if it happens to you because you'll go into shock. 
Um, yeah, you might feel nauseous, like me, your body might be shaking. In a preventative way, anywhere you are traveling, try not to be alone, especially in the ocean. The ocean is a very intense and a dangerous place. Have written down some numbers or some places you can go to for help in each particular situation that you're in, each place that you're in, what you can do, because you don't want to turn a preventable situation into something life-threatening. So just stay safe when you're traveling, guys, and stay tuned for more of my videos. I've had some other experiences with wildlife in Asia and some other crazy stories to share. So yeah, subscribe, give this video a like if you learned something new about stingrays today. I'll see you next time for another story. <laughs>